Hey guys, Dr. Matt Bodle here, and thank you for joining me today. Now, something I hear all the time from patients is, you know, in the beginning, I was really excited about making nutritional changes and being healthier, but I just couldn't be consistent with it. And soon, no matter how hard we try, some of those old habits and food choices that might not be the best for us start to sneak back in. So in today's video, I wanted to go over my best tips for eating consistently for Hashimoto's that way you can feel your best and you can be successful in the long term. And if you like learning about natural strategies to support your Hashimoto's and hypothyroid symptoms, like, subscribe, and click on the bell for videos every Thursday. Now, when it comes to improving your health, the tough reality is you have to change what you're eating if you want to change your outcomes. I know it can be hard to give up some of your favorite foods and no one said it was gonna be easy. But as we work to make those changes, we have to replace those old favorites with new favorites and other things that you enjoy. Because if you don't enjoy what you're eating, you're never going to be able to be consistent with it. So let's get into the tips and talk about how we achieve that. Number one is don't swap a processed food diet for a different processed food diet with better labeling and marketing. Many times I will have patients ask me about products that they found at the grocery store that are labeled gluten-free, keto friendly or vegetarian. And although I love my patients making this extra effort and doing a good job of trying to look at their food labeling, we have to be a little careful here. These food companies know what's popular and they know what you're looking for. And they've adjusted their branding and marketing to reflect that and hopefully encourage you to buy their products. But we have to take things one step further and look at the back of the packaging so we can assess the nutrient content and the ingredient list. Many times these products that are promoting the, uh, the virtues of a particular dietary approach really don't have your best interest in mind. And they're trying to use that marketing to gloss over what is otherwise a very processed food. When we select these products that have a huge list of non-pronounceable ingredients and low nutrient status, although it might be better than some of those other products, because they are so processed, they have the capacity to keep us in that processed food vicious loop where we're not getting enough nutrients, we're not nourishing our body, we're feeling hungry all the time, and therefore our ability to make changes in a sustainable way becomes severely compromised. So if consistent healthy eating isn't about choosing a packaged food with a particular diet label, how should we approach this? And that's why tip number two is to choose five go-to whole food recipes that you love. The weird thing about nutrition is sometimes it can feel really overwhelming because there's so many options out there, and other times it feels like we have no options for what we can eat. So to avoid that step where you have to look up a recipe or come up with something, especially if you're busy and short on time, you need to do some prep work and come up with five recipes that you can pull up anytime you need them. In my opinion, the simpler the better, because that can only make things easier on you. Some of my favorites include a ribeye steak in a cast iron and asparagus baked in olive oil and salt. Or I might take a whole chicken and surround it with chopped Brussels sprouts, carrots, onions, and sweet potatoes, squeeze a lemon over the top, add seasonings, and let all of those flavors mingle together. Both of these recipes don't require a huge effort on my part, and although the chicken does take a lot longer than the steak, it doesn't require a lot of my attention. But if you want to, get as fancy as you like, as each of our preferences are going to be different. Just make sure that you often have those ingredients on hand and you know the recipe inside and out. Five recipes gives you enough variety that you won't get bored while also not making things too overwhelming. As you progress, start to feel better and learn about what you like, then you can feel free to add more recipes as needed. Now, if you're feeling short on time or you're overwhelmed by the amount of prep that you need to do, then tip number three is for you. And tip number three is to meal prep the basics and then once you're ready to eat, then change the flavorings. So what I often see when someone gets excited about their new nutrition plan is they take several hours out of their Sunday and they create the exact same meal seven times. Now in theory, this is a really great idea. You've saved a lot of time later in the week 
and you know you have something healthy to choose, especially if work gets crazy on you or something pops up. But although I'm someone who's very much a creature of habit and could easily eat the same thing every single day, I know that's not the case for most people. And therefore, using this kind of approach can very quickly lead to palate fatigue and us looking for a food option that is maybe a little bit more interesting to us. So instead of meal prepping the exact same meal, what I mean when I say meal prep the basics is you'll want to take your protein or your vegetables that you're choosing and you want to prepare them in a way that's very simple and can be adapted to a lot of different dishes. So if I'm going to prepare chicken thighs for the week, then I'm going to bake chicken thighs with only salt, pepper, and olive oil. And what that does is it gives me a really neutral base or foundation for any meal that I want to make. On Monday, I might reheat that chicken with cumin, turmeric, and cinnamon, but on Wednesday, I can completely change the flavor profile by instead choosing things like coconut aminos, garlic, and grilled onions. By making small adjustments to the herbs and spices that we're choosing, we can have huge differences in the flavor profile for our meal. And by the way, this isn't something that you have to do on your own. All you gotta do is get online and look up different herb combinations and all of that work has been done for you. But by prepping things early in a simple manner, you're still saving yourself that time and effort. And by changing the herbs and spices later, you're creating a variety that allows you to maximize the enjoyment for your meals while avoiding the feeling that your diet is boring and also limiting any sort of food waste. Because, and maybe it's just me, but whenever I try to prep a full week, there's always two or three meals that I never end up getting to. Tip number four is to eliminate processed sugar. And if you don't think this is a big one, you're crazy or you've never tried to do it and you don't realize how challenging it can be. Sugar is addictive, and in a way that I think is similar to alcohol, having sugar often leads to other food choices that probably aren't the best for us. Although a lot of food brands out there, and the one that always comes to mind for me is Coca-Cola, will freely admit that, yes, we have sugar in our food, but it's okay as long as you're having it in moderation, I believe that these highly processed, highly sugar laden foods actually leads to patterns of disordered eating. And although moderation would be nice because there's so much sugar in these foods and because of the way it changes our physiology, we can't actually moderate these foods in a healthy manner. High sugar foods, especially for people with thyroid issues, tend to lead to larger fluctuations in our blood sugar. This can cause us to feel hungrier sooner and also cause symptoms like changes in energy and headaches, which we then tend to try to solve either by eating too much or eating more sugar, which then perpetuates the problem. So if you really want to be consistent with your nutrition in the long run, cut out the sugar. You'll feel better, your energy will be more stable, your cravings will be less, and your taste buds will actually adapt. When we remove the processed stuff, then natural sources of sweetness become much more enjoyable for us. As we make that shift, a little bit of fruit, a little bit of honey, or maybe even some dark chocolate can become so much more enjoyable and it can scratch that sugar itch without causing us as many health complications. But if we're going to remove the sugar, then we need to make sure that we're still fueling ourselves and not getting too low on our calories. And that's why tip number five is to make sure to include plenty of healthy fats in your diet. One of the reasons why nutritional changes fail is because we're not fueling ourselves properly. And although you can be hungry for a while without it negatively impacting you, but in the long run, that hunger is going to win out, especially when we live in an environment where food is so available. But if we can keep ourselves full and satiated with healthy options, then, that hunger no longer becomes a problem for us. And that's where healthy fats come into play. Now it's true that many people are eating too much fat, but it's fat that comes in the form of processed vegetable and seed oils, which is a cornerstone of processed foods that you can find at the grocery store and food that you get at restaurants. But if we can cut down on the processed oils and focus more on fats that come from whole foods, that's where a lot of the benefit is. 
fatty meats and fish, eggs, avocados, olives, and nuts and seeds for those who tolerate them. Not only are these fats healthy, but they also make our food taste great. And what we say in the beginning of the video, if we want to be consistent, we need to enjoy our food. Sure, nutrition plans for some people might mean skinless chicken and broccoli. And while that might be one way to achieve certain health goals, it's probably not something that you can do forever. So instead, have the salmon with lemon and rosemary. Enjoy a steak with some salt and garlic. Yes, these foods have fat in them, but all fat isn't created equal. These fats have health benefits, and if you've been avoiding fat because you're scared of it, then you could be taking away from something that you might really enjoy as part of your meal, and you're missing out on the advantage it provides you in terms of stabilizing your hunger, your cravings, your sleep, and your energy. And finally, even though I know the internet is not a fan of even numbered lists, we're gonna finish up with tip number six. And that is, don't worry about the special occasions. If there's one thing I know, it's that none of us are perfect. And there's going to be times where you're going to want to eat foods that don't 100% align with your health goals. And that's okay. You can either go into that situation stressed out, nervous, and worried about what Dr. Brad is gonna say the next day, or you can go into that situation with enjoyment and knowing that you're making the decision on your own terms. Are you gonna feel horrible the next day? Well, depending on the sensitivity of your system, it's a possibility, but it doesn't help us out to further stress about the situation. There are more things to food than just health itself. And maybe you wanna help celebrate a friend or family member. Maybe you're in a new culture and wanna connect with some local people. Or maybe your friend prepared you a meal and you don't wanna insult them. All of these are valid situations where you might end up eating something that you're not used to. And while it's not always ideal, as long as you're putting in the work the rest of the week, that one special occasion isn't going to tear everything down. Health is never about one choice that we make. It's about many thousands of choices that we make all coming together. So don't stress about the special occasions. You're making it worse than it needs to be. And as long as special occasions don't start to become so frequent that they become the norm for you, you'll still be able to make progress and still be able to have success. But I hope that you liked today's tips. And if you have any questions, thoughts, or input, feel free to leave me a comment. If you like the information, but know that you need more help and would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, either in person or virtually, then send me an email at contact at seattlethyroidhelp.com. And once we hear from you, my staff will get in touch see if you qualify for a free consultation and help you to get scheduled. With all my patients, I wanna make sure we do as good of job as possible to understand your full health history. That way we can make sure to create a specific and individualized plan for your needs, which will allow you to have the best outcomes. If you'd rather work on some things at home, you can grab either one of my free downloads listed in the description box, check out any of the other videos on the channel, or you can visit my full script portal where I have all the supplements that I use with my patients on a regular basis. But I love you guys and hope you're doing well. Thank you for watching today. If you're looking for more information, you can always follow me on Instagram or Facebook. Links for that are down below, or you can send me a message. But my name is Dr. Brad Bodel. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your week, and I will see you in the next one.